the term, but for lack of a better term, I am a crybaby. <laughs> the first time that I remember inappropriately crying in public, like outside of my family, um, was in the third grade when my teacher, Mrs. Peake, read to us this book called The Tenth Good Thing About Barney. Spoiler alert. <laughs> the cat dies. <laughs> and I just remember looking up from my wet desk <laughs> with a puffy face and making out all of these faces of third grade dog people <laughs> who just didn't know what my problem was. Um, I do, I cry at everything. I, every, every chorus concert, um, I've cried to Bonnie Raitt, I've cried to Miley Cyrus, Party in the USA. <laughs> True. I'm the assistant cross country coach. I cry at every race. <laughs> Ollie's one of my guys. Um, I, uh, my daughter goes to the nature preschool in town, and at the end of every year, they do this really sweet ceremony where they recognize each kid. Each kid's given an award. Um, and when my daughter got the Forest Gnome Award, <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> I wept through the whole thing, <laughs> but I cried for every single kid. <laughs> the bear and the snail and the tree, everyone. Um, I, I have, on my phone I have the last, it's gonna be good, I might, I might cry. Um, I have the last voicemail my grandma ever left me. And I listen to it a couple times a year and just cry a lot. Um, technology has really upped my game in practicing, <laughs> in practicing for this story. <laughs> I've actually recorded this story into my phone. And then when I got the nerve to listen to it, I listened to myself crying. <laughs> it made myself cry again. <laughs> check in. Like, I'm not, I'm, like, I like to cry, but I'm not a total emotional mess. I get up in the morning. I can hold down a job. <laughs> but speaking of crying at work, um, a few years ago, I've done plenty, but I'll just tell you one. Um, a few years ago, I was here doing some, um, curriculum work over the summer, working at my desk, and um, my best friend and I were, were cut from the same cloth. She also likes to cry. And she, we email links back and forth of things that have made us cry. So I was listening <laughs> to a particularly compelling um, episode of StoryCorps. And I was just making my desk wet again, much like my third grade desk, typing away. And then my door opens and I lock eyes with Mr. West <laughs> as he ushers three Bolivian teachers into my classroom who just want to look at, at an American art classroom. And he is horrified, much like my third grade classmates, and does a quick swoop and a pivot. <laughs> I had to get myself together and go let him know that I was recreationally crying. <laughs> and nothing was wrong. <laughs> um, I, I've been part of a mentorship program at Convell for the past couple of years, and um, when, it, it, when it started here, it cropped up, I like volunteered right away, and I was like, yeah, inspiring kids, that should be super easy. Um, <laughs> uh, and I thought of, of like my high school mentor, who um, was my high school art teacher. And um, she opened up like this whole world of art making to me. And I was like, I want that lady's job. It was like a pretty uh, uh, linear move. 
Um, and I've learned over the past couple of years, it's a lot harder. Um, mentoring is more nuanced than that, especially if you're working with students that um, haven't found the thing at school that they really connect to yet. And I was working with one of those students, and he had lots of goals, but lots of them were longer term. And one of the short term goals was uh, making the basketball team. And he um, worked towards that goal and went out for the team, and he fell short. He didn't make it. And it was, uh, he was so disappointed. He was so embarrassed, and he told me, I'm just never doing that again. Um, and then he came back to school the next school year. Um, he was enrolled in less classes, and I just watched kind of this downward spiral, and I felt really worried that, um, that he might drop out. Like, and we stopped meeting because he stopped being here the whole day, so our schedules didn't overlap. And then I just stopped seeing him for a while um, until one day he showed up at my door. And he's like standing at the door, kind of waving, and I'm like, me? Really? <laughs> and um, he, he's like, yeah, you, come here. Um, and he tells me, uh, I met one of my goals, and I wanted you to know. And he said, I made the varsity basketball team. And what did I do? You guys know what I did? <laughs> I cried. I gave him a huge hug. I was so proud of him because um, the, the nuance of mentoring is about helping somebody do something because it's good for themselves and, and not needing like the external person to be like, you should really try again, even though it was hard last time. And he did that. He found that. And um, I think being this huge crybaby helps me uh, <laughs> helps me be present and um, and more empathetic. And I'm just claiming my identity as a huge crybaby, cry person, crying tiger. <laughs> Thank you.